So the caregiver support program of the Dementia Care Collaborative was started at MGH in 2017. And we are a part of the Palliative Care and Geriatric Medicine Division. Um, as many of you know, because I've seen a lot of your faces here before, which is phenomenal. Uh, the mission of our program is to transform memory care. Uh, we exist at Mass General to educate, to connect, and to support patients, caregivers, clinicians, everybody, the whole community. So that's why we exist. Um, we offer care consultations to caregivers and patients in specific MGH clinics. We offer some skills classes for caregivers. We offer support groups, which I think some of you here might be in. We offer health and resiliency programming, like this program this afternoon, like the Ageless Grace classes. Um, we also offer our educational forum, Conversations with Caregivers, and that is the third Tuesday of every month at 5.30 p.m. We always have different, um, different experts speaking about something that we think will, will resonate with caregivers. Uh, next, our next one is April. I didn't write down the date. So third Tuesday in April, and it's Dr. Julia Gallagher, and she's gonna be talking about palliative care and hospice care um, on the trajectory of dementia. So stay tuned for an email about that. Um, that's kind of the nugget about our program and who we are and why we're here. I'll tell you a little bit about Ellen. Ellen de Genoa of Genoa is a certified instructor of the Tree of Life's eight active ingredients of Tai Chi teacher training program. Try to say that three times fast or just once slow. She is the Tai Chi instructor for the MGH's, for the MGH Parkinson's Tai Chi and speaker series. And Ellen continues to accompany her mom on the journey of brain disease. And she's overall pretty awesome. And um, I really love the shirt that she's wearing today. Feel all the feels. So we are going to spotlight Ellen. Thank you so much for being here. And Thank for you, offering Lori. the program today. So I'm going to mute myself and it's all Ellen. So thank you. Thank you so much, Nori. Hey, everybody. Welcome to my living room. If I knew you were coming, I'd have baked a cake. I'm so grateful for the education and support the Dementia Care Collaborative have given me over the years. Disasters averted could never be counted. And a special shout out to Barbara Moskowitz, who's been so generous with her time and wisdom. She recently guided me through some gut-wrenching care decisions. Now, for those who are yaktose intolerant, I apologize in advance. I'm going to be doing a bit of yakking. So why the title, Changing the Channel with Tai Chi? Well, with all the hats a caregiver wears, it's easy to get stuck on the rumination station. And it's easy to get locked into a linear nose to the grindstone feeling. A joylessness can creep in. The to-do list is long and the symptoms of brain disease unpredictable. So why should we feel calm and relaxed when the goalposts keep getting moved on us? Balance might be elusive, but Tai Chi can in the least help us find ballast so we don't get bowled over and our nervous system doesn't get packed in fight, flight, or freeze. Sometimes we need the redirect. I'm my mom's primary caregiver. She has vascular dementia. Honestly, I wrestle with how much to talk about my mom's particulars in public, but I can say this. If I love Lucy and Rosie the Riveter had a love child, it would be my mom. Her sense of humor, spirit, and defiance is something to behold. We all have our COVID stories, and mine is that my mom lived with me and my wife for most all of last year in our apartment. It was a year of poignant intimacy, laughter, tenderness, and also frustration and bewilderment with a little gnashing of teeth sprinkled in. The year was topped off with my mom having a stroke in November, which seemed to amplify already existing issues. And I do have to say, because it's March 25th, that this is one of my favorite memories from last year, was that on March 27th, 
when me and my partner, then partner Kate realized this COVID thing could be deadly and we better get married. So we had a COVID shotgun mat, um, wedding in our backyard. And my mom walked me down the so-called aisle, which was the alleyway into the backyard. And I am so grateful, so grateful that we got to do that. Throughout the year, I continued to attend my Tai Chi and meditation groups via Zoom. Sometimes I had one eye and air on my mom and one on the class, but I say half-assed respite is better than none. It was always worth it to show up. It allowed me to change the channel for a bit, to get off the caregiving carousel and reboot. This in turn increased my capacity to soften, to yield to my mom's reality, and to come back to love, plain and simple. In our latest chapter, my mom is being cared for by the beautifully loving and kind people at the Newton Wellesley Center for Alzheimer's Care. It's also a new chapter of grief and relief for me and some emotions I really don't fully understand yet. Now that my mom is safe and in the hands of caring professionals, my biggest revelation is that it's okay to let her have dementia. I don't have to cover and I don't have to compensate for the brain disease anymore. I did everything I could to keep her in the game for as long as possible. But barring a miracle cure, the disease process gets the final word. And it's my job not to take that personally. So let's move on to the PowerPoint slides. It's about the length of a power nap so if that's what you need, go for it. And I'm just take a minute here to share my screen and get a sip of water. I also have to say this morning when I got up, there was this big ass truck parked in front of my apartment making ungodly sounds. And my wife, Kate, went out and bragged them to be quiet for this hour. <laughs> so shout out to Kate. <laughs> this Rube Goldberg illustration makes me think of caregiving. Not so much the content as the complexity. Mouse A dives for painting of cheese B goes through canvas and lands on a hot stove, C. He jumps on a cake of ice, D, to cool off. Moving escalator drops him on boxing glove, F, which knocks him into basket, G, setting off miniature rocket, H, which takes him to the moon. Woof, maybe that was just your morning. If we were to sit down and do a Rube Goldberg, a day in the life of a caregiver, we'd go through the entire alphabet and then some. So why Tai Chi and not skeet shooting? Tai Chi's multimodal energetic implications for mental and physical well-being may never be fully quantified, but that makes it no less valuable. Tai Chi is highly adaptable and portable. No special equipment or location is required. And now, zooming at a device near you. So thanks to COVID, Maybe the days of expecting caregivers to block out an impossible three hours to come on site for support are over. The eight active ingredients of Tai Chi, is, which is what I was trained in, provides enough of a challenge to stay engaged, but not so much that it overwhelms and frustrates. Tai Chi can provide interruption to chronic stress. And we know that chronic stress can lead to inflammation, which in turn can lead to an array of health problems. Self-regulation defaults get stronger with Tai Chi, which can help keep detrimental stress hormones at bay. Tai Chi promotes resiliency and enables a sense of agency. We're empowered to figure out our own dosage so we can dial up what we need on any given day. Tai Chi play is play, playing is learning, and learning keeps the noggin's neurons alive and kicking. And unlike skeet shooting, no clay pigeons will be harmed and no eyes will be put out. So I don't think we have to fall too far down the studies rabbit hole today. It's well documented that caregiving can be hazardous to one's health 
especially the unsupported variety. But whenever someone starts rattling off the dismal health impact of caregiver stress and depression, it makes me feel kind of stressed and depressed. So depending on the malady, studies show either evidence or at least indicate that Tai Chi, what, what Tai Chi players already know, it's good for you. So I'm just gonna go over these highlighted areas. Tai Chi appears to be associated with improvements in psychological well-being, including reduced stress, anxiety, depression, and mood disturbance and increased self-esteem. Self Does anybody not like feeling self-esteem? <laughs> I hate it when I like myself. Tai Chi may, re, may modulate the inflammation process. So that refers back to the previous page. Uh, reducing the infl inflammation process is a good thing. One potential mechanism of Tai Chi on major depressive disorder may occur via the attentional control network. During Tai Chi, attention is focused on the body posture, movement, and breathing regulation, and is shifted away from the stressor. So this is a fancy way of saying we can change the channel with Tai Chi. And then at the bottom, the bottom there's compelling experimental and observational evidence supporting a bi-directional interdependence of physical postures and mood. So if you're familiar at all with the Amy Cuddy work in the power position, the Wonder Woman position, um, or the victory, it's really hard to feel bad when you, have certain, when you have certain positions, certain posture. And I've never had anybody walk up to me in a victory pose saying they feel really depressed. So this is stuff that we know intuitively, but we can apply it with intention as a strategy to maybe feel better. So this book was written by my Tai Chi instructor, Peter Wayne, and he's the director of the OSHA Center for Integrative Medicine at the Brigham. And Peter formulated the eight active ingredients of Tai Chi. It's a conceptual distillation of Tai Chi's essential components. Each ingredient is interdependent and interwoven with the others. The eight active ingredients are modeled after the active ingredient found in a drug. The simplified Tai Chi movements could be viewed as an energetic dosage that can promote physical, psychological, and spiritual well being. Now you can see that Granny snuck in in the corner there and she found her special sauce and she wanted her bootleg um, rheumatism medicine. So she got her dosage. The eight active ingredients include attention, intention, relaxation, flexibility, alignment, moderate aerobics, breath, strengthening, imagination, social interaction, and the power of ritual. And I always say the ninth active ingredient is laughing or humor. But the last three on this list, some people might view as softball items, but they're actually, there's a, there's a realness to them. So we know with imagination and expectation through Ted, Kapchuk, Ted Kapchuk's work on the placebo effect, that that's a real thing and, and it's valid and there are great outcomes. We all know that um, caregiving can be very isolating so social action, social interaction is hugely important. Um, and we know through COVID, the isolation of that, if we didn't know before, we know now. And the power of ritual, I can use from my own life um, that I would have certain Tai Chi moves or I could take refuge in the ritual of that move. And I, I can show you some of that. I do, we, we'll start with pouring, swinging and drumming. And that's one that I just take refuge in. It's a five minute thing, 10 minute thing. Um, and it's no big deal, no special setting that's needed. And the other thing I'll say about community and social interaction is that when I would show up for those classes and I was extremely exhausted and really, am I following the instructions? Maybe, maybe not, but I needed to be with my peeps for a little while. That was like hugely important. Um, and it's amazing how much of a community family you can get even with Zoom. So the top of the title here is words and concepts at a glance like for lifelong exploration. And that's because these snippets here are more of a, um, an appetizer of an introduction. So the first one for Tai Chi is, a, is just taken out of Peter's book. 
a mind-body exercise rooted in multiple Asian traditions, including martial arts, traditional Chinese medicine, and philosophy. Qi is considered the circulating vital life force present in all beings and in the entire universe. It's said that where the mind goes, qi follows. So you could also replace the word qi with, um, it's said that where the mind goes, energy follows or breath follows. Yin and yang, which is the symbol to the left that you're probably familiar with. Complementary polar opposites that together create a dynamic, balanced, interdependent whole. Yin and yang is fundamental to Tai Chi and is a pole, pillar of traditional Chinese medicine, science, and philosophy. So if we look at this symbol, it's kind of flat. And um, so it's not really, if you were to hold that symbol in your hand, it would be a fully dimensional orb. But the dark side is called yin, and that's more the non-doing. And the light side is called yang, and that's more the doing. And something I didn't notice until I started doing Tai Chi were the dots. So there's a little bit of light in the dark and there's a little bit of dark in the light. And we can, some examples of the yin and yang would be uh, heavens are considered yang, the earth is considered yin, the in breath is considered yin, the exhale is considered yang and you can't have one without the other. And right now we're in spring and that's considered new yin, new yang. So maybe you've had your own yin and yang experience with maybe you've eaten something spicy and fiery and that would be yang. And it, when it really lands in your stomach, you're like, oh my God, I need a glass of cold water or a glass of cold milk. So you just offset the, the yang with some yin, something cold and bland and cooling. I think most of my life, I've probably had two settings, wired and tired. So sometimes getting yin and yang just to be on speaking terms is real progress for me. Another way we can, uh, we can view the autonomic nervous system is through the lens of yin and yang. So the parasympathetic nervous system is the more chilled out rest and digest side, and that's considered yin. And the sympathetic nervous system, more action related, is considered yang. Now an overstimulated sympathetic nervous system can set off a prolonged state of fight or flight with all the accompanying stress hormones. And the uncertainty of illness can keep a caregiver pretty revved up. Hypervigilance can become the default. In light of this, I humbly propose that all caregivers should end their day with a yin and tonic. Or maybe the yin is the tonic. And down at the bottom there is sung. And for now we go with active relaxation through a stable base that gives us staying power, resilience, and a sense of buoyancy. Now I was gonna put in parentheses next to buoyancy, joy, but I didn't wanna to go too crazy. But it's the ballast in the eye of the storm. There's no point in getting bent on balance when through no fault of our own, a disease process just doesn't always allow for it. It's an awful lot to ask, but it's possible to find an anchor to strengthen staying power with a groundedness we can truly trust. So if all else fails, don't forget your roots. So we're gonna check out a little Whitman sampler of Tai Chi. And I, um, the power nappers may want to arise now and check this out. And hopefully we'll find something that strikes you fancy and that you can take into your life. And just give me a few minutes to get set up here. Fantastic, Ellen. This is, I'm just, I feel very grateful to learn from you. So thank you for your presentation. You're welcome. All right. I'll zip All it. Right. Make sure my feet are completely in the picture. And if you have um, socks on, you might want to be barefoot or have shoes just so there's no slipperiness. Um, of course, we're going to just go for safety. So if anything hurts, don't push it. And since caregivers give 150% of their um, effort into caregiving, this is a little bit different where we only give 70% of our effort. And you might want to keep a chair nearby to assist with balance and whatnot, or just to take a break. It's kind of ironic because I'm feeling 
we don't have a ton of time, so I feel like I want to whip through these Tai Chi moves. And that's kind of, you know, this is soft and gentle, slow type thing. So I got to bring a little yin to my yang, bringing a little yin to the yang. So just taking a moment, I just want to change this view a little bit for me. Uh, okay. So we're just going to take a moment and stand, just stand and just check in and get a baseline. Just see where we're at for now. Just taking a breath and exhaling, just enjoying a few good deep breaths. And that exhale is the thing that lets that nervous system know that everything's okay. Everything's all right. And we just want to feel the connection to the earth. So can we imagine those roots growing into the earth from our feet? Or you could imagine that it's a power source and your feet have plugs on them and you're plugging into the power source. And because it's spring, you could also imagine, these are just some images. And if, it, if you're not into the whole imagery thing, just ignore me. But um, you could imagine there are two stethoscopes on the bottom of each foot. And you're hearing the rumbling of spring. You're hearing the earth come awake. And just checking in. So we're going to just begin to pour from left to just from each side. Pouring our weight into one leg and then the other. And this is our first way that we can observe yin and yang. So the yin leg is the empty, unweighted leg. And the yang leg is the one that has the weight in it. I'm just playing with that. And we can get in touch with the liquid body by doing this. Imagine that we're holding a basin that has a little bit of water in it. And can we really enjoy that leg that's not doing a whole lot? Can we allow for that? Just tuning in, connecting to the earth. And then we're gonna just allow the knee of the unweighted leg to fall in and we're gonna turn a little bit with the waist. This is the quad, the inguinal fold. You're just allowing it to close. I'm gonna swing. Your heel might come up on that unweighted leg but just allowing your arms to be as loosey-goosey as possible. You can be like a kid who doesn't have a care in the world. We can use our imagination, right? And part of Tai Chi is recruiting our imagination for well-being. Imagine, imagination is an awesome thing till it's not. And we just start thinking all these worst case scenarios have, that have yet to happen. We get into that rumination. So how does that spinal rotation feel? If there's anything in your back that feels tweaky, can just back off to 50% or 40% of your effort. If you want to go with Fenway Park COVID capacity, you could go to 12%. You are in charge of your dosage. You can speed this up or you can make it slower. So this was the one of the rituals I take refuge in. It's a no must, no fuss thing that I can go to anywhere to just kind of take the edge off. And then we're just gonna do what's called drumming and we, just kind of vibrating our, ourselves, vibrating our bones, ringing our bell. Since it's spring, sometimes my teacher will say we're just kind of banging out the dusty rug. So it's first we tap onto the upper part of the chest. And again, you can be as vigorous or, or as soft as you like. And another way to sort of bring the mind into more to the body than the mind is to listen to the sounds, tuning into the sounds that the drumming makes.
And we can go to the ribs, side ribs. Keeping the arms nice and loose. Checking out the neck, making sure the neck isn't grabbing. And then the side ribs. I'm sorry, the side waist. <laughs> we did the ribs. And the sternum. Soloplex. I can't bang too hard on my soloplex. That's not a great feeling. I just go lighter. Belly button. And below the belly button. And then we're going to use both hands. So it's the belly button and the kidneys. So I'm just turning to the side to show. And then below the belly button and the tailbone. And letting that come to rest. And again, taking a new baseline. How does that feel? Is there any more vibrancy? Is there any more vitality? If you're having a draggedy ass day, could this be something that helps you feel a little bit more awake? Or if you're feeling anxious, is this something that could sort of take the temperature down a little bit? Just breathing, enjoying the breath. So this next one is called vertical swinging. I guess technically it could be called uh, swinging to connect the kidneys and lungs, but we'll just go with vertical swinging. So there's a little bit of sit to it. And sometimes I think when I have this camera tilted, it looks like I'm really leaning over, but it's just to sit. So I'm gonna show it from the side first. So there's a bend to the knees, it's a sit as we come up. So as the arms come down, there's a little bit of a sit. And then as the arms come up, you straighten the knees. We never lock the knees. And just allowing for a little bit of perkiness to the fingertips. I think I'm just gonna see if you can see my fingertips. Yeah. So just allowing the fingertips to come away. There's a nice pumping action that happens with this. So again, I feel like this can be calming. It's a versatile move, or it can be energizing, or maybe a little bit of both. I guess we're really looking for both. And you want to imagine that you have like a cat suit on or a Dr. Denton pajamas so that you're stretching the fabric from your feet all the way up your legs, the torso to the arms, to the head, and you're getting out these little micro wrinkles. And again, I'm gonna use a case scenario and if, while I'm talking, if this is too much, feel free to take a break. So say yesterday your person was asking the same question over and over and you were figuring out the redirects or just had good chair about it and were answering them. And then today it's just driving you crazy. So maybe it would be beneficial to just go into a different room and maybe take five minutes and discharge that energy and maybe you'll come up with new ideas because we all know what worked yesterday doesn't always work today. And just on the last thing I'll say about the mechanics of this move is to keep an eye on your shoulders and make sure that they're not scrunching up. And just let that come to rest. Then we can do a little bit of a, what's called dragon wags its tail. So we just 
We're going to stretch the flank area. We're just sort of side bend and watching the shoulder and the neck. And just seeing again, if you can feel that stretch from the foot up the calf, the knee, leg, all the way up the side body. And as you fold over the folded over side, like you're folding over a ball, so there's not a scrunched up thing happening. And we'll just go back and forth a little bit. So the side where you're feeling the stretch, you could say that that's more the yang side. And the side that's folding over is more of the yin. But can we keep a little bit of life in the yin side and a little bit of chill in the yang side? Just let that come to rest. And the next one is called spinal cord breathing. So we open up. This would be more the yang, yang phase. Just open up. Might feel good if you've been on a computer a lot or whatever. Just open up. Have a nice smiling clavicle. And then we fold in. And again, I sometimes wonder if it looks like I'm really bending over. It's just a slight fold in. And you're getting a good stretch in the back. So spinal cord breathing. And be gentle. This is the back. This is the spine. So if anything feels tweaky, just, you know, reduce the effort. And the hands are soft. The wrists are soft. And we can just check out different parts of the spine. So the lower part, the lumbar. We can wiggle your butt a little bit to see if you can connect with that. Maybe if you have lower back pain, you can get a little bit of life and chi and energy in there. And as you come up, you can have a slight tilt to the chin, but you don't want to be crunching down on your neck. And you can check out the mid spine, the thoracic area. Again, if a little bit of wiggle helps, Get more into that area, that's fine. And then you can let the head feel a little bit heavier, get a little bit of stretch in the those neck bones, the cervical spine. And I'd like to think of this one as a morning glory. So the morning glory goes to sleep at night, and that's the yin phase. And then wakes up to greet the day in the morning. That's the yang phase. And both are so valid, right? There are times in our life where we need to be more like this. And there are times in our life where we're perfectly good with being like that. And just hanging a bit and then just coming up the head the la is the last to come up so there's my truck he's back but I don't think you guys are hearing it too much so I'm just going to continue so the next one is called fountain let me just bring this back down a bit uh, So with the fountain, we're gonna, thing I like about this, going back to that concept of song, so that the Chinese character for song is a, a tight bun and the hair is coming, flowing freely, letting down. So when we have the stable base, um, our muscles can hang more freely so that you don't have that death grip, like we're holding ourselves up. So this whole idea of posture coming from up above, that's, that's just a holding. But we can have so-called good posture if we have the stable base, if we have it coming from the power source below. So I like the fountain as a good metaphor for that because when we look at a fountain, we're wowed, wowed by the crest. But the crest of the fountain wouldn't be happening if it wasn't coming from below. So just keeping that in mind, again, the rootedness to the earth, the connection, your, your feet connection to the earth. So we're just going to cross in the midline. 
and stretch like you're a kid just waking up. Any way that you need to stretch, just getting that nice opening. And they say that crossing the midline gets the both hemispheres of the brain communicating better. But just feeling that power source from down below. Now we're gonna go the other way. This one's called washing yourself with chi from the heavens. So it, it requires a little imagination, um, intention, and just imagine being at a place that feel, makes you feel whole and good. Could be something outdoors, um, could be the beach. It could be in a place with a lot of trees where you're just having some amazing oxygen sent your way. But we're gonna filter out all that's dark and murky and toxic. And we're gonna bring in the rejuvenating healing energy that we need for today. And only you know best. So the one thing I wanted to say about this from the caregiver perspective is how many times in a day do you get to even ask yourself, hmm, what do I need? It doesn't always allow for that, right? So I'm saying that we can take a few minutes and say, hmm, what do I need? And you don't have to go anywhere for it. It can be somewhere in your house to just say, yeah, Okay, I need some unconditional love. Uh, okay, I need some courage today. And for you, for that might that might mean thinking of a, a favorite grandma or um, a favorite friend. And for me, I imagine sometimes a big white personalized medicine cloud packs itself right over my head, and I just pull down from it what I want, and I'm just washing down. Could be a color, could be a frequency. If you're hot, you might want to bring in a cooling color or a minty green. If you're cold, you might want to bring in some orange. You just wash down. And you're washing out all that's murky, dark, and toxic. And you're bringing in that healing, rejuvenating energy. So it's just washing through your cells, your organs, your cartilage, your ligaments, bloodstream, washing through. And if you think the whole imagery thing is silly, that's completely valid and fine. Just bringing your hands down through the front of your body can sometimes change things. From an energetic point of view, just washing down. You can look, look at your hands like a scanner. See, if you want, you can wash down the back body we forget about our back body, we forget about the back field. Whatever you need today, just bring it in. And then we're just gonna bring up a little bit of yin or earth energy to balance out that heaven energy of yang. Nice grounding earth energy. And this next one is called push. So I'll, I'm going to marry you, so I'm going to say, pour your weight into your left leg, turn the right foot out by about 30 degrees, pour into the right leg and take a step up. And when you take a step up, I'm just going to adjust this. Make sure that you have enough width. So you don't want to be on a tight rope. And if any of this ba more balancey stuff um, freaks out your neck or gets you really tight, Use the chair and make, make it smaller. So you just, you just um, pull the weight to the front leg and to the back and just see how that feels. And if you need to make any adjustments, feel free to do that. So 100, pour 100% to your back leg if you can do that. Or if you want the assistance of the chair, that's fine. And about 65% of your effort should be in the front leg, or 65, I should say effort, 65% of your weight should be in your front leg, and your hips are at 12 o'clock. And then we're gonna bring the hands up, and the wrist is soft, and we're just gonna pulse a little bit, bring a little bit of life into the fingertips. And 
And then we're gonna just go 100% on the back leg and allow the hands to fall. And then we scoop up. You can, if you want, you can imagine scooping up some good earth energy. And you stay back until the hands turn and then you go back to that 65% or so to the front leg. When I first learned this movement, I thought, oh, okay, this is the difficult person movement. So when someone tries to send something my way and it doesn't belong to me, I just say, no, actually, I'm just going to slide it back across the table to you. And the hands, it's a little bit of a misnomer that it's called push because the hands look like they're pushing because it's coming from below. It's coming from the action of the legs. So we're not going like that. We're letting the hands come along for the ride. And sometimes I've been wondering if we could do this with the disease, with brain disease or any kind of disease process. I mean, I think so many caregivers take on so much, we're so responsible. And can we maybe let the disease stay with the disease? So, hey, you know what? The progression of disease, I'm going to slide it back across the table because that one's not on me. It's not my fault that a disease progresses. That's what a disease does. So I don't have to take that one on. I got enough on my to-do list. And then as you come fully back on the back leg, turn your front foot about 30 degrees and the back leg is going to become the front foot and you still get that nice width. And we'll just do it on this side for a few. And you might imagine a little bit of resistance that helps with waking up the chi, a little energetic resistance. Maybe you're pushing through some nice salt water. Maybe you're in the great molasses flood of 1919 and you're pushing on some molasses. And I think we'll just finish up with um, wave hands like clouds. I'm going to demo it. And the reason I wanted to just at least demo it is that I hold a lot of emotion. Um, did I say feel all the feels? So my wife, Kate, said you must wear this shirt today. <laughs> and um, so a lot of my emotion seems to hit the middle of my body. If I'm angry, I have a knot in my stomach. If I can't admit I'm afraid of something, I maybe sometimes feel nauseous. And what I realized one day after doing wave hands, not even realizing it, is that there was some sort of energy clearance happening by waving my hands in front of my belly because the knot seemed like it was more that it was softer, it melted, and the nausea wasn't so severe, it went away. So I, have, I don't think anybody, any study is going to explain this, at least not yet, but I do think there's some sort of energy clearance. So i just show you what it looks like, and then we'll break it down. So this is wave hands like clouds. And then to just break it down, I'll just take a few more minutes. I know we're getting close to the Q&A time. So the, the, the feet can be a little bit wider than shoulder width distance, but go it's with comfortable for you. And then we're going to go back to that pouring that we started with. And then as we pour to one side, we're going to turn. So this is, this is called the quad, the inguinal fold. So we turn a bit, and you can tell by your belly button just making that turn. And then you pour to the other side, and then you turn. So it's pouring and turning, pouring and turning, pouring and turning, pouring and turning. And what you might find in your mind's eye is that we're creating a little bit of a figure eight or an infinity symbol. And if that doesn't do it for you, don't worry about it. It's not a belly dancing class. And then when you get to your right side, we're going to bring the hand in. We're going to use the hand as like a paintbrush. So your right hand comes up, and then you just paint across by your belly button. The palm faces out. And then as you turn, you lift the hand, and your palm is facing in towards you, and it goes by the heart. And the leg, the, what's happening with the, the bottom half of the body doesn't change. You're pouring and turning, and the hand comes along for the ride. 
So the hand's not doing a whole lot, except that it changes position when it goes from the belly button height to the heart height. And then if you want to get really fancy, you just bring both hands in. And this is the type of thing where you have a number of steps, and it's a great example of where you can get off anywhere on the Tai Chi elevator. So if you like, hey, you know what? This felt really good. I'm going with this. This is like confusing and annoying me, so I'm not even going to go there. Or you could say this is confusing, but I'm having fun with it. So you get to see, you know, you get to regulate how it works for you. But we'll just let that come to rest. And we'll just take a minute to check in with our baseline again. So with your feet connected to the earth, you still get those roots. You're getting, pulling up the nutrients from those roots. Just what we need for today. In my slides, I noticed the word interdependence came up a lot. And it made me think that we kind of need each other. You know, it's the thing that makes the world go round. From one caregiver to another, I just want to say that you have my deepest respect and love. So thanks for coming to the class today. I think we'll go into the Q&A, if there is any. Ellen, thank you very, very much. Sure. Um, so would any, I, I feel more grounded and energized than I did before we started. So I'm curious if anybody Sometimes after a movement practice, nobody wants to put anything in the chat. But if anyone, let's see. Roberta says, thanks very much, Ellen. That was great. Um, if anybody has any questions or feedback. Yeah, I think it is. And the, the thing about Tai Chi that is really good for that kind of thing, especially since I'll preface this by saying the medical stuff should be ruled out first. That if yep. you, need, you know, if there are any medical issues, then yep. you know, by all means, have medical community take care of that. But if you've been kind of cleared, the the back stuff. I think the cool thing about Tai Chi is you can go as gentle as you need to go, and you can, you know, sometimes um, you know, I didn't talk too much about chi today, but sometimes chi. Um, a pain can be viewed, just another way to view a pain after the other issues have been ruled out is that, or maybe even with a medical issue, but it can be frozen chi. So how do we gently approach that? Sometimes it's first coming at it with some kindness, um, but how to get that chi to melt, how to get it to sort of warm up a little bit and melt. So you, you go really slowly with it. I know for me, when I have a chronic injury, I'm just so friggin' fed up with it. And part of that, so one day I said, how about if I just talk nice to this tension of this injury? How about if I say, hey, you know what? Hello, old friend, let's pull up a chair. And I guess we're gonna be hanging out together for a while. Mm -hmm. And that was a difference, that wasn't resignation. That was more of an acceptance. And what I found is I'd say, it felt about 20% better maybe when I can do that, you know, that the, the being pissed off at the injury and, and oh, you again, just made it much worse. So that's just one simple thing without even doing a ton of movement. But then to take that into some movement and to say, wow, if I turn any further, that doesn't feel great. So I'm just going to keep it minimal. And there's no pressure to turn it. This, it's so un-American. <laughs> there's no pressure to turn it into the Olympics. Yeah. It, actually, it, it's just that not going beyond 70% effort. And if there's an injury or other things, and also we can get fearful about how we move. So we have to respect yeah. Yeah. any kind of injury or pain and just work with it really slowly and gently. So yeah. that's just, just a little take on, you know, my experience anyway. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you. It was really great, Ellen. It was oh, excellent. Thank you. really very appreciated. 
Thank you. Thanks. So we've got just a few minutes. So we've got some more comments and questions. Um, so two questions. Somebody says, um, is it always important to have your knees bent? And the same person asks the question, are there any online classes that you might know about? Yep. So is that person available to speak for a minute? Diana. Yes. So the, the do you have knee problems? So the thing about, oh, she's still muted. Oh, can you? Yeah, it's funny. It looks like Deanna is not muted, but. Okay, that's all right. I mean, <laughs> the basic thing that I would say is the bending of the knees is to protect the back often. So you'd want to have a little bit of bend to the knees and people with knee problems would probably need to make some sort of adjustments with that. But it's, I think for the most part, there's a couple of things. The bending of the knee gives the power to go down so you can go up. You know, again, it's fueling the up. The down fuels the up. So that's one piece piece of it. The other, I believe, is protective. Um, as far as an online class, my school is Tree of Life. And Peter Wayne heads that. And you can look them up online. And they offer an array. And actually, uh, post-COVID, they're going to keep a number of classes online for people. It just I added it to the chat. So yeah, check out Tree of Life. And it, it's actually Peter Wayne, like um, W A Y N E. Oh. I yeah, I know that. Thank you. Sorry. Um, let's see. Just some other comments. That was lovely, calming, and energizing. Thank you. Um, Barbara says, Ellen, both my body and soul feel relief as you guided us. Your message was gentle, kind, compassionate, and forgiving. Thank you. Um, somebody else says they feel a lot more rooted than before. Um, I thought this was a really great comment. Angela said, I always thought Tai Chi was really difficult and complicated. So thank you for showing us something different. That I have to say is the genius of Peter. He took the elements and instead of, you know, having and basically giving people the dosages that they can do in real life, because certainly caregivers aren't going to be able to memorize often. They don't have the time and energy to put in a, to learn a 12 minute choreography. So this has taken the best of that world, but putting it in bite sizes so people can actually apply it to their lives. Yeah. Um, well, it is it is 159. So I think, let's see. Amy says, thank you, Ellen. This was wonderful. Um, so I just want to say, Ellen, thank you so much for taking this time today um, as a caregiver to share with other caregivers. Um, and I think... You know, you, you offered so much opportunity for choice. You know, there's those eight ingredients. And, you know, when you said sometimes you're not even sure what you might need and you don't, as a caregiver, give yourself much of an opportunity to ask yourself that question because there usually isn't that time. So I think for me, a takeaway of this practice is that sometimes you don't know what you need. And a lot of these practices, these postures and movements can feel grounding and energizing at the same time that yin and yang. So you get a little bit of both. If you don't know what you need, you can do one and maybe the one thing you need will reveal itself. Exactly. Don't forget to have your yin and tonic tonight. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. So um, if you have any questions, if you want to get in touch with Ellen, I had put her email uh, up in the beginning, but if you didn't catch it or you forgot it, you can always email me. I'll put my email address in here again. Um, oops. Oh boy, <laughs> can't type when people are watching, <laughs> um, it's stressful. So you are gonna, I'm gonna send an evaluation out in a little bit. So if everybody could take, I think the evaluation probably takes two minutes um, just to give some feedback about what is helpful and what sort of programs you'd like to see the Dementia Care Collaborative do in the future. That helps us for our programming. You're getting lots of rave reviews. Great job, Ellen. Thank you, Ellen. So. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Uh, stay tuned for the survey and for future invitations to future um, caregiver support programs. I got to say, there's my friend Angela from London. Hey, Ange. Hey, from London? Yes. All right. Great job. <laughs> so awesome to see you. Nice. We'll be in touch, eh? All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Bye. Bye.